Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. As you can see, I'm waving this palm because it's Palm Sunday. And we praise and thank God for this Palm Sunday morning. And if you're glad to be able to worship God this Sunday morning, put those hands together. If you're glad to be in the service of the Lord one more time. and enthusiasm let us praise God from whom all blessings flow worship I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord our feet have been standing within thy gates O Jerusalem for a day in New York courts is better than a thousand elsewhere I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I will seek your goods those who are planted in the house of the Lord they flourish in the courts of our God O Lord I love the habitation of your house, the place where your honor and glory dwells. But the Lord is in his holy temple, that all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. And we shall do so by lifting up one of the greatest hymns of the church, number 450, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let us lift our voices and sing this great hymn of the church. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, virtue 
presence of God, poured of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, ring from above, echoes of mercies, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. pray. Eternal God, our Father, we have come once again into this sacred space, in this sacred moment, to worship you. We acknowledge now and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness that we have done with all word and deed against your divine majesty. We ask, O oh God, that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Blot out our iniquities, O oh Father, and help us in this moment to be of the right spirit, to worship you in spirit, and in truth, and in the beauty of your holiness. Lord, before we go any further, we ask that you would have mercy this morning. Have mercy on those who are wrestling with the loss of loved ones, not just from the mass shooting in Colorado, but from the deaths locally for the teenagers, young men and women committing crimes against each other and others have mercy this morning. For the families who are having to deal with the realities of food deserts, educational issues, family distress, abuse and neglect, have mercy this morning. For the patients who are in the hospital rooms, wrestling with health crises of all kinds, have mercy this morning. For the first responders, the nurses, police, 
firemen, medical workers, giving their all in service, have mercy. For those who are incarcerated this morning, we pray to you for their comfort, for whatever they may be standing in the need of, to bring about reconciliation to you and others, have mercy this morning. But most of all, we just pray for one another. We need you this morning, oh God. We know that you are a way maker, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Have mercy this morning, oh God, have mercy. Be with us as we worship you, but most of all, empower us and liberate to serve you in the newness of life. As we go through this holy week, remind us daily of the cross that you have carried and the cross that we may carry also. Lead us and guide us in the way we should go. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. God, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you in this place for being our way maker, miracle worker, worker, promise keeper. That is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah, Samabo. Hallelujah. Bless your God, bless your God. Uh, this Palm Sunday is a moment for us to, before we go through the observances of Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, it's a moment for us to position ourselves to, to be witnesses to the power of God through Jesus Christ. And I hope that uh, I hope that you find a way to find yourself in God's plan during this Holy Week, this Passion Week leading up to Resurrection Sunday. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Turn with us to the Gospel of St. Matthew, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 21. We're going to begin reading at verse 14 and read down to verse number 17. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 14 through 17. Hear the word of the Lord. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant and said to him, Do you hear? what these children are saying and Jesus said to them yes have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes you have prepared praise for yourself and he left them and went out of the city to Bethel, Bethany and spent the night there I want to talk to you this morning from the subject when your religion gets rattled when your religion gets rattled I'm sweating already let us pray father just as I sense your presence in this place just as others experienced you even, even so now we honor your presence, we honor your spirit, we honor all of you in this moment. To speak to us words that will bring and give new life, words that will liberate and empower us, words that will enable us to serve you and to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. As always, oh God, your servant as I stand behind this sacred desk again, ask that you will allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be found acceptable in your sight. For you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. As we observe Palm Sunday and Holy Week, we retell the story of what has been known as Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem as he and his disciples were coming there to observe the feast of the Passover. It wasn't anything unusual about this feast. It wasn't anything unusual about their presence. What was unusual is the manner by which he entered the city gates of Jerusalem. What was unusual was the calamity that he caused 
because people were celebrating him. I don't know about you, but I've been in the presence of a few celebrities, and every now and then I, I, I fell into the trance of all the onlookers <laughs> as you realize that you're in the presence of somebody who has fame <laughs> and maybe even a little fortune, and you get a little googly-eyed. Now, I know some of y'all may not have been teenagers before in your lives, maybe never remembering having a crush on your favorite singer, your favorite actor or actress, uh, and getting to see them in concert, and you just, uh, just didn't know how to handle yourself. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Uh, the people were celebrating him as if he were somebody. And the interesting thing is Jesus was going to Jerusalem for a preordained purpose that only he was fully aware of. He had already been informed that if he were to go to Jerusalem, he would surely be killed. And even with the recognition of that, he, he makes the journey to Jerusalem. Jesus makes this journey prearranged with a, a, a family to let him use their prized donkey. And, and as he's walking, the Bible says that, that as he's riding on the path from Bethany, from, from uh, well, not Bethany, but yeah, he was in Bethany, but uh, Bethpage, that's what it is. Walking from Bethpage into Jerusalem, there were crowds who were following him. And the Bible says that those people, as he was approaching them, would lay down palms. And some even laid down their personal clothing items to let him walk over it. We don't know the exact number. It could have been a couple of dozen. It could have been a couple of hundred. But... It was people who valued this, this prophet from Nazareth. This man whose fame for the last three years had gone abroad all throughout the land. And, and they finally, some of them finally get a chance to get a glimpse of him. Some of them were probably returning to see him after his last encounter in Jerusalem where he said that, that he was going to be bread and water for them to drink and some of them left. Some of them were, were just trying to see the man who healed a woman just for letting him, her touch the hem of his garment. There were a lot of people in the crowd for different reasons, but Jesus still pressed through the crowd and made his way to Jerusalem. The Bible says that when he got to the temple, he, he, he kind of got a little out of character. If we were to be honest, this is one of the few times that we see Jesus uh, doing something that some would categorize angrily, some would categorize as disorderly, some would categorize as dysfunctionally. Jesus goes in the temple, he sees the merchants there in the area selling and pandering to the people, and he turns over tables, he takes, he takes his time to, to make a whipping. Uh, we're, we're not sure if he, he, if he starts at one place and makes it all the way through, but what we do know is that he is this intention in this action and he says as he's driving these people out of the temple he says to him the, the word says my house should be a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and he drives them out now mind you I believe his disciples were kind of wondering what is going on with this Negro what is going on with this man we, we just made it here and he already acting a fool y'all know folk like that Y'all know folk that you can't take nowhere sometimes. I'm not saying that they said they couldn't take Jesus anywhere. They, I'm just saying uh, that, 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 that Jesus may have been a little embarrassing to them in that moment. 
Remember again, he had disciples when he came to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. He had disciples who heard him preaching, were fascinated. But then when he gave the invitation to come to him and the means of him doing so, they could not stand it and left. Jesus goes through this action, perhaps disappointing many of those who had gathered in the temple to make their sacrifices because they had no means of doing so. They perhaps were mad at him because he thought he had clout coming in here chasing out the very people we needed to make our sacrifice. Who does he think he is coming in here getting rid of the services that uh, is offered to us? Turtle doves, pigeons, that's all we could afford already and he's driving them out. Who does he think he is? We came to make a sacrifice and he's doing away with the means of allowing us to do so. Who does he think he is? There were some who were scoffing at him but then our text where we begin says there were some who were ready for him. Uh, there, there was some who, who were mad at him because of his actions to the commons. They, they were the staunch capitalists who, who were mad that they couldn't do what they wanted to do in the place they believed they needed to do it. But there were people who were outside, who was neglected, who were oppressed, who saw the man that they could only heard about. And, and, and they saw him and they were blind and lame and they came to Jesus and Jesus healed them. Let me tell you, Jesus is present for the oppressed. Jesus is present for the oppressed. In spite of the events that happened as he entered the temple, turned over the tables and chased out the money changers and all of that associated with the pageantry and the paganism of temple worship, uh, he, he still had an audience who was ready for him. My God, can I, can I tell you something? I, I know a lot of us have, have come to the church and we've come in and we've been baptized. We've gone through the rituals. We do the things we think is expected of us and we still get disappointed because we don't see the things that we believe should be happening and, and we walk away. But then we realize we can have an encounter with the real Jesus outside of the religious expectations. And when we see him, he sees us. And when he sees us, he sees our need and because he sees our need he may have just turned over some money changers but he say come unto me all you who are weary and heavy laden I'll give to you what you is there anybody here who needs Jesus to see them in their oppressed moment right now I don't know where you are but I know Jesus sees you right where you are come unto Jesus God, come unto Jesus and let Jesus heal you of your oppression. Come unto Jesus and let Jesus open your blinded eyes. Come unto Jesus and let Jesus take away the strength uh, that you were enabling yourself to do and let him give you the strength uh, of his spirit so you can walk by faith and not by sight. My God. The, the, in spite of him coming with the intention to worship like everybody else, but seeing the reality of how the religious establishment uh, were profiting off the privacy of worship, uh, Jesus still made a moment for those who were in real need. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the people who were going to, to pay for the turtle doves, for the pigeons and all of that, they were in need to make a sacrifice. Uh, and they couldn't see that they need a savior to heal them. They were in need of an exchange to go through the motions of religion, but they didn't see that they had a Messiah in their midst. Oh, my God. They, they were in need of the wrong thing, and they couldn't see the right man in front of them. But those who had been outcasts, those who were beggars, those who were in need, saw the one who could supply their needs, and they went to him, and and he healed 
Damn. Beloved, just, just know God, Jesus is in your presence. Jesus is in your presence right when you need him for what you need him to do. Secondly, we find in the text, in the midst of all of this, the word finally got around to the religious establishment. The chief priests, the high priests, the scribes all heard of this. And that, that, was, that was bad for them. But, but, but what, really, what really ticked them off was when they heard the voices of the nobodies saying something about somebody they should not have been singing about. Oh my God, y'all. They heard the voices of the children crying and singing Hosanna to the son of David. Let, let me put a pause here and let me, know, let me tell you, Jesus affirms and values the praise of the oppressed and neglected. Uh, uh, you, uh, you see, there are two groups of people who have been neglected and oppressed in the place of worship. They were in the right space for the right reason, but the wrong people were ignoring them. And finally, somebody comes in who recognizes that he has the responsibility of being to them what they need. The blind get their eyes open, the lame gets the power to walk, and the children gets the power to sing. They were indignant at the voices of the children singing, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. And I pondered this for a moment. Why were they mad at the children? Why, why, why were they mad that the children were singing so much to the point when they finally get in Jesus' presence that they don't talk about the tables being turned over. They don't talk about the, uh, uh, the, the money changers being chased out. They, they don't talk about the, the lame and the blind being healed. The only thing they have to say to him, according to the text, is don't you hear these children doing something they don't have the right to do in this place? Uh, they, 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 they come to Jesus and say, don't you hear these children, uh, these who have no voice, giving their voice in praise to somebody who should not be in this place? I, I, I didn't hear them talking about the high priest. Uh, I, I didn't hear them talking about the scribes. Uh, I didn't hear them talking about anybody else. But here these children who have no business saying anything, opening their mouth and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Do you hear them? I, I, I speculated. I, I speculated that the reason that they had an issue with the children singing the praise of Jesus is because they, they knew of Jesus but didn't know Jesus. They, they, they knew of Jesus' fame. They knew how he was able to influence people and how he was able to challenge the authority of the Pharisees. They, they knew of all of that but they did not know his story. Uh, they, they did not know that he came through the line of David. They, they had forgotten about his father, Joseph, going to Bethlehem and, and all the signs and wonders that accompanied, the, that accompanied him. Uh, all they could think about in that moment was the fact that they were equating Jesus of Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Uh, they were equating Jesus of Nazareth uh, with David, uh, the shepherd boy. Uh, 
David, the king uh, who got the material uh, to build their first temple. Uh, David, uh, the prince. Uh, David, uh, the psalmist. Uh, David, uh, the prophet. Uh, that's all they could think of, uh, but they did not know uh, Jesus, uh, the Son of God. Uh, Jesus, uh, the Lamb of God. Uh, Jesus, uh, fulfilling the prophecies of God. Uh, came just for this purpose uh, and the children uh, were singing uh, because the children had enough sense to recognize uh, that God had a plan uh, not just for Jerusalem uh, but just also for them uh, and Jesus retorts their, uh, he retorts their, their condemnation of the children by saying don't you know it's written out of the mouth of babes uh, Praise will come to God. Uh, uh, Jesus. Jesus affirms the praise of the neglected and oppressed. And believe me, believers, beloved, uh, you may seem out of place. And I guarantee you there's some folk trying to oppress your voice because yours is a testimony to what God has done. You would think that people would be glad to hear somebody's testimony. But every now and then somebody hears a testimony and gets a little grouchy. Somebody hears a praise and gets a little haughty and prideful in themselves. They don't have the right voice to praise God. They ain't really been through nothing. They don't have the right means of praising God. They ain't got a story like mine. I've been in the church 70 years and I, I ain't never had to lift my hand. I've been in the church 50 years and I've never even said amen. I, I don't know about what they talking about. These these people don't know Jesus like I know Jesus. They don't know God like I know God. But can I tell you God is on your side uh, and God is willing to let your praise uh, lead to your breakthrough. Uh, God is willing to let your praise uh, bring you out of bondage. Uh, God is really uh, though you may be a baby in the flesh or uh, in the spirit uh, God is saying just lift your voice and give praise to me uh, shout unto God uh, with the voice of triumph uh, is there anybody here uh, that has a praise uh, nobody wants to hear uh, that has a praise uh, nobody wants you to sing uh, I know uh, God is real uh, he's real in my soul. Uh, hey. Jesus makes an impact by saying you to these chief priests, scribes, he says, you so caught up on your religious role, you missed the reality of the presence you're supposed to be in. Let me tell you this, it doesn't matter where you are in your faith walk, it doesn't matter if you're new to the faith, it doesn't matter if you've been in the faith for a long time, the one thing that matters is that you never forget that you are always in God's presence. Ne never, never forget that when Jesus comes, He's not coming for those who have the religious ideology ready to defend their practices, even if their practices keep people oppressed. He's coming to see those who are on the outskirts, those who, who are feel, uh, most people feel don't deserve what he has. But the reality is that God loves you so much, beloved. God loved you so much, Jesus loved you so much to come into the space where people say you don't belong. He loved you so much to come into the space where people are walking around you neglecting the real need that you have just so they can carry out their religious obligation. He loves you so much to come into the space where you're sitting begging and people are neglecting you and he said, come unto me and you can come to him and get what you need. That's the God that we serve. 
that's the God. Jesus, the Son of God, who, while people were crying Hosanna, he probably didn't want them to say all of that. Probably didn't care for all the celebration. Probably wasn't moved by all of that. What he was moved was by those who knew they had a need and couldn't get it from the religious organization. Those who really had a need and were neglected by everyone else. Those who had a voice that people tried to keep down and ignore. It's those to whom he came. And it's to you, if that's you, he's coming. And he's available now. Don't be misled because religion will, your religious affiliation, affinities, and all of that will be rattled when you encounter the real Jesus. When you encounter the real Jesus, all of that just falls off. And you have something that you can't explain, but you know it's worth it. Let's pray. Father, just as when Jesus walked into the temple, and though he cleansed it of all the unrighteous things happening, he still saw the people who were in need and ministered to them. He still saw and heard the children singing, recognizing your glory, and allowed it to happen. So, in this day and age, May we too be like Jesus. May we see the needs and minister to them. May we hear the voices of praise and allow them to be sung. So I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, there may be somebody here who is in need of Jesus to come into their space. You may not be physically lame or physically blind. You may not be a child, but you are in need of a savior. And we offer Christ to you. If you would surrender to him right now, he would give you not just life abundant, but life eternal. If that's you, we extend Jesus Christ the invitation of Christian discipleship to you. That's you this morning. Surrender it all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. We have done the, as the Lord has commanded, and yet there is still room. And as always, if you are unaffiliated with a worship uh, community of faith, a house of faith, we invite you to join us at New Bethel, where you can worship with us and grow in grace. Amen. As we continue to worship, and shift from the preaching to the ministry of giving, we offer this opportunity for those of you who are so inclined to join us in worshiping the Lord with our gifts. And again, we are so grateful for those who have supported us throughout this virtual 
uh, experience. We thank you so much for your giving that has allowed us to do so much. And as you know, there's always two ways to give. If you would like to give to New Bethel, you can give to the physical address. It should be there on the screen. You can also give by way of Givelify there on the screen. However the Lord allows you to give, we thank you so much. And let us lift the offerings that we are about to receive up to the Lord. God, you are the giver of every good and every perfect gift. It is to you that we give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but we give cheerfully, willingly, of that which you have provided to us. We ask God that as we give, that you will give back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Allow men to give into our bosom, that we may carry out the work of the ministry here at New Bethel. We pray for those who desire to give but don't have it. Provide for them that they may be able to do so. As we give our tithes and our offerings, whatever you have afforded us to give, God, we thank you in advance for what you will do for us, to us, and through us. It is in the name that we pray and bless this offering. Amen and amen. As they play that song, we recognize that on this Friday, we will be observing Good Friday, the day we recognize as the day Christ not only broke bread, but took up the cross on Calvary. And as we prepare to close out, we invite you to join us in singing just this one chorus, but I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. said amen 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 mm -hmm. one day when I 